In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise, and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The word of the Lord is found recorded in 1 Samuel, the 20th chapter, beginning at the 24th verse. So David hid himself in the field, and when the new moon came, the king sat down to eat food. The king sat on his seat, as at other times, on the seat by the wall. Jonathan sat opposite, and Abner sat by Saul's side. But David's place was empty. Yet Saul did not say anything that day, for he thought something has happened to him. He is not clean. Surely he is not clean. But on the second day, the day after the new moon, David's place was empty, and Saul said to Jonathan his son, Why has not the son of Jesse come to the meal, either yesterday or today? Jonathan answered Saul, David earnestly asked leave of me to go to Bethlehem. He said, Let me go, for our clan holds a sacrifice in the city, and my brother has commanded me to be there. So now, if I have found favor in your eyes, let me get away and see my brothers. For this reason he has not come to the king's table. Then Saul's anger was kindled against Jonathan, and he said to him, You son of a perverse, rebellious woman, do I not know that you have chosen the son of Jesse to your own shame? and to the shame of your mother's nakedness? For as long as the son of Jesse lives on the earth, neither you nor your kingdom shall be established. Therefore send and bring him to me, for he shall surely die. Then Jonathan answered Saul his father, Why should he be put to death? What has he done? But Saul hurled his spear at him to strike him. So Jonathan knew that his father was determined to put David to death. And Jonathan rose from the table in fierce anger, and ate no food the second day of the month, for he was grieved for David, because his father had disgraced him. In the morning Jonathan went out into the field to the appointment with David, and with him a little boy. And he said to the boy, Run and find the arrows that I shoot. As the boy ran, he shot an arrow behind, beyond him, and when the boy came to the place of the arrow that Jonathan had shot, Jonathan called after the boy and said, Is not the arrow beyond you? And Jonathan called after the boy, Hurry, be quick, do not stay. So Jonathan's boy gathered up the arrows and came to his master. But the boy knew nothing. Only Jonathan and David knew the matter. And Jonathan gave his weapons to his boy and said to him, Go and carry them to the city. And as soon as the boy had gone, David rose from beside the stone heap and fell on his face to the ground and bowed three times. And they kissed one another and wept with one another, David weeping the most. Then Jonathan said to David, Go in peace, because we have sworn both of us in the name of the Lord, saying, The Lord shall be between me and you, and between my offspring and your offspring forever. And he rose and departed, and Jonathan went into the city. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The word of the Lord is found recorded in the Acts of the Apostles, the thirteenth chapter, beginning at the first verse. Now there were in the church at Antioch prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manan, a member of the court of Herod, the Tetrarch, and Saul. While they were worshipping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then after fasting and praying, they laid their hands on them and sent them off. So being sent out by the Holy Spirit, they went down to Seleucia, and from there they sailed to Cyprus. When they arrived at Salamis, they proclaimed the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews, and they had John to assist them. When they had gone through the whole island as far as Paphos, 
they came upon a certain magician, a Jewish false prophet named Bar-Jesus. He was with the proconsul Sergius Paulus, a man of intelligence, who summoned Barnabas and Saul and sought to hear the word of God. But Helamus the magician, for that is the meaning of his name, opposed them, seeking to turn the proconsul away from faith. But Saul, who was also called Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked intently at him and said, You son of the devil, you enemy of all righteousness, full of all deceit and villainy, will you not stop making crooked the straight paths of the Lord? And now behold, the time the hand of the Lord is upon you, and you will be blind and unable to see the sun for a time. Immediately mist and darkness fell upon him, and he went about seeking people to lead him by the hand. Then the proconsul believed when he saw what had occurred, for he was astonished at the teaching of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel is found recorded in the Gospel of St. Mark, the second and third chapters. One Sabbath, Jesus was going through the grain fields, and as they made their way, his disciples began to pluck heads of grain. And the Pharisees were saying to him, Look, why are they doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? And he said to them, Have you never heard what David did? When he was in need and was hungry, he and those who were with him, how he entered the house of God in the time of Ab Abiathar, the high priest, and ate bread, the bread of the presence, which, is, which it is not lawful for any but the priests to eat, and also gave it to those who were with him. And he said to them, The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath, so the Son of Man is Lord even on the Sabbath. Again he entered the synagogue. And a man was there with a withered hand. And they watched Jesus to see whether he would heal him on the Sabbath, so that they might accuse him. And he said to the man with the withered hand, Come here. And he said to them, Is it lawful for, on the Sabbath to do good or to do harm, to save life or to kill? But they were silent, and he looked around at them with anger, grieved at their hardness of heart, and said to the man, Stretch out your hand. He stretched it out, and his hand was restored. The Pharisees went out immediately, held counsel with the Herodians against him, how to destroy him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A devotion from some writings of St. John Chrysostom. First, as for Saul, he hated and abhorred David so much after the countless good services which he had done, after his brilliant triumphs, and the salvation which he had wrought in the matter of Goliath, that Saul could not bear to mention him by his own name, but call him after his father. For once, when a festival was at hand, and Saul, having devised some treachery against him, and contrived a cruel plot, did not see him arrive. Where, said he, is the son of Jesse? He called him by his father's name because he thought of thought to damage the distinguished position of that righteous man by a reference to his low birth. A miserable and despicable thought. For certainly, even if he had some accusation to bring against the father, this could in no way injure David. For each man is answerable for his own deeds, and by these deeds he can be praised or acu and accused. But, as it was, not having any evil deed to mention, Saul brought forward his low birth, expecting by this means to throw his glory into the shade, which in fact was the height of folly. For what kind of offense is it to be the child of insignificant and humble parents? Saul, however, did not understand true wisdom in these things. Also from Chrysostom, for love does nothing unseemly, but as it were with certain golden wings, covers up all offenses of the beloved. Thus also Jonathan loved David and heard the scorn of his father as one 
who has nothing of a man, but lives to the shame of himself and the mother who bore you? What then? Did he grieve at these things, and hide his face, and turn away from his beloved David? No, quite the contrary. He displayed his fondness as an ornament. And yet the one was at that time a king, and a king's son, even Jonathan. The other a fugitive and a wanderer, David. But not even in this circumstance was he ashamed of his friendship, for love does not act inappropriately. This is its remarkable quality, that it not only does not suffer the injured to grieve and feel irritated, but even disposes him to rejoice. Accordingly, the one of whom we are speaking after all these things, just as though he had a crown put on him, went away and fell on David's neck. For love does not know what sort of thing shame is. Therefore it glories in those things for which another hides his face. The shame is in not knowing how to love rather than incurring danger and entrusting all for the beloved when you do love. We confess together our common and saving faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.